Ten months of work, ten months of overtime hours and, and weeks of late nights and weekends at machine shops all come down to a couple of minutes. Five, four, three. You're counting down and an entire year comes down to one moment. <laughs> down to a thousand things having to work correctly and fortunately for this team it did and, and they set the world record in the process. The previous record was set by Fredericksburg High School which is the founding school of the Systems Go program. They went a little over 36,000 feet above ground level and this team came in uh, and launched just over 45,000 feet. I'm Chris McLeod and I teach rocket engineering at Brazoswood High School. Here at Brazoswood High School, we have a three-year rocket engineering program. Each year has a different mission. So we operate under a nonprofit called Systems Go out of Fredericksburg, Texas. So we're part of a network of about 75 schools across the country doing this. So first-year students, they walk in, and this is a pile of parts that they see. They've got to figure out how to use everything that they see here, and more if they want, but at least these materials to build their first-gen rocket. These are the fin sets they would use. Random sizes, random cuts. They have four days to build this rocket. I will be around shortly to look at your progress or lack thereof. I had never done anything related to rockets before. So this stuff goes in this side yes. and that will be open to this, right? Yes. Okay, there's one. So I think that's how it goes. <laughs> So my expectation for our students is first of all, just to try, you know, to be curious about what we're doing. Oh, I see a light bulb moment, I'm gonna walk away. I don't expect them to have a ton of background knowledge about rockets or the physics. So, we're getting close. And so we start from a baseline of zero knowledge. We also need to do this first. I feel like we're doing pretty good. This is the first rocket I've ever built. So, and this is gonna go right there. Yeah, this is the recovery system. From that, I expect them to build out a notebook to where they get all of their equations down, all of our notes down, and they can use that as a resource throughout the year. And then we can just add our friends. So by the end of the year, not only have they built a rocket that flies to a mile in the air, but they also have a resource that they can use for future years and hopefully into their college career. And then where is this going to go? It's going to go in the bottom. So I've learned that there's a lot of creativity in first generation rockets I see every year that are very different than what we've seen in the past. So I notice you've got three fins here and four fins on your drawing. Why the design change? So we felt it was too crowded with the four. And what's your deployment technique? How's this thing going to come down softly? If I say here's how to do it, no one will ever deviate from that. You got this. But if I say figure it out, we're gonna find 15 new solutions every year. Uh, a little bit more that way. This way? That way, that way, that way, up. And I think that's super important when we talk about innovation and creativity in STEM. I'm a very detailed person. Tomorrow is our last day. We check these, we go over safety, and we fly on Friday. Friday. We're just kinda hoping that we actually just get it up in the air. It's hard to beat launch day. All the way down, and then you bend it 90, and then the plug holds that in. The excitement of all of that work culminating to a 10 second countdown, it's unlike anything else in your life. Three, two, one. It's, it's, uh, whoa! Oh, that was a good one. Oh. From a success standpoint, the goal is to get it to the launch pad. But as far as beautiful flights, there's gonna be very few. That's good. That's good. And the goal is to video all of that failure because we learn a whole lot better oh! from understanding failure than accidental success. We're stuck in the ground. Stuck in the ground. Every grade level is its own mission. So the sophomores try to get to one mile in the air. When we're talking about the first half of flight, we've got wet mass is our T equals zero, right? That's the point at which we're fully loaded, ready to fly. The junior level teams, wet mass minus flow rate times second. They actually will go up and meet with NASA engineers and review a flight profile that they've built. They have a goal of trying to break the sound barrier, trying to go Mach 1 or greater in their mission. So it has a lot more complex modeling. And then that culminates in senior year, which is a mission to uh, set a world record. It's really easy to lose sight and scale of what these students really accomplished. First off, there's very few 
student teams in the country or even the world that attempt any rocket of this size, especially one that's a hybrid rocket, which is a more complex two-part propellant system. And so to watch a team design from scratch a rocket of this magnitude, a rocket of this size, with high-level carbon fiber composites and parts that they've CNC milled and laid themselves. Testing that they've done themselves with instrumentation and avionics and, and GPS telemetry. To watch all of that come down and work is, is absolutely phenomenal. And there's very few student groups in the world that can say that they've done something to this level. They launched this June successfully at White Sands Missile Range. The rocket was 212 pounds, fully loaded, it was about 18 feet long, and it flew to over 45,000 feet above ground level. I knew as soon as I saw it go off the rail that it was going to break the record, but it was, it was nice hearing the confirmation of the 45,000 feet, and yeah, it, it felt really good. We just finished our 10th year of this program at Brazoswood High School, and I've been a part of the program in our district for five years. I started as a physics teacher 12 years ago now, and have just moved my way into STEM and CTE type courses, and now I teach rocket engineering full time. This was just just a GPS. This is the GPS and the. So this is the okay. telemetry. Lighting. Yeah. I had zero clue how to build a rocket, but by the end of the year, I knew everything towards like weight distribution, airfoils, and air friction. This is carbon fiber. All you really know when you kind of join the program is rockets go up, they have fins, and they have nose cones. But Mr. McLeod uh, starts you off pretty basic, and he teaches you a lot of the basic. Stuff. I knew more about physics doing rockets one than doing regular physics. So that's why all injectors have that to make it spin around, okay, which helps the flow rate, right? While I do like to give them a good jumping board to jump off of, most of what you see is my teaching style. It's standing back and asking good questions and letting them interact because a lot of times as a teacher, if I just wait that couple of minutes, they're gonna go figure out where to go look. They're gonna go figure out what to go look at. And that's really what I go for. He makes us work and understand that everything can't be given to us. And with that, we get a better understanding of all the information that we get. Not everything's for a grade. Uh, it's just for the sake of you completing it and understanding what you were doing at the end of it. So I, I think his teaching is uh, unique and I appreciate him as a teacher. I like the way how he helps you figure out the answer but won't lead you all the way. So now the $500 question, how do you start and stop injectors? He's kind of a mix of hands-off and hands-on. If I go read a book on how to do something, I know immediately where to find that resource again. I don't have to go ask Mr. McLeod anymore. It's really what guides us from being guided in building a rocket to us building the rocket. He can point us in the right direction with different resources, but eventually it's, it's all up to us, and that's a very good feeling that we are in charge of making this a successful mission. I just leave them alone for a day or two, and they start to stew about what does this look like, uh, what does this take, and you see them making sketches and talking to each other and starting to you know, research things online and watching that buzz that's pretty incredible. Please join me in celebrating our Region 4 Secondary Teacher of the Year, Chris McLeod, Brazoswood High School, Brazoswood ISD. This year I won Teacher of the Year, I won our Campus Teacher of the Year, and then moved on and won at the district level, and then recently won at the Region 4 level. So I'm one of three finalists at the state level for Teacher of the Year, and it's incredibly humbling. Being an electives teacher, being a teacher that's not in the normal uh, core classroom, it's cool to see so much recognition for what we do and for what I get to do in the classroom every day. And it, I think it gives a lot of validation to our program. So this is part of the 2022 world record rocket. So this is the oxidizer tank. This holds all the liquid part of the fuel. And then here you can see the back end, which has carbon fiber fins. We lost one on impact. You know, STEM is a buzzword, but it's also really important. Uh, we're in an ever-changing society and we're in one that is becoming more and more dependent on computers, on technology, and even on manufacturing processes and, and automated learning. So to try to prepare students for jobs that didn't exist 10 years ago, or jobs we don't even know will exist in 10 years, that's incredibly tough to do. What we do well in our STEM programs here is that we create problem solvers and we create students who are not only aware of where society is going and seeing the science and technology behind it, but also willing to step in and say, I wanna try that. This really isn't about the rocket. Yes, we want to set records. Yes, we want to get really good at engineering skills. But the real focus here is that we build collaborators, problem solvers, 
and, uh, and world builders. I mean, these students are going to go off with a skill set because of the required communication, because of the teamwork, because of the dynamics of learning everything to solve a problem. That, that's going to make them better in society, make them better in their community, and just make them a better person overall.